Well, it looks like Mel and I are gonna be shouting some beers soon because today the roof starts going up on the tiny house. So just a quick word about the roof. We're actually putting on a white color steel roof. The reason we chose a white roof was actually to do with heating and cooling in the house. By having a white roof, what you're doing is you're reflecting light and heat back into the atmosphere, which can really actually make a big difference when it comes to keeping your house cool. Now, even though our tiny house is designed to be a mobile structure, we have actually designed it with a north-facing aspect. Part of that means that the northern side of our house, as you can see on this plan here, is virtually entirely covered in solar panels. What those solar panels essentially do is they will create a, almost like a second roof by shading the first roof, which creates even more of a cooling effect on the house. Having the white roof and that lower temperature on the roof will actually also aid the solar panels and help them to increase their efficiency by having a cool backing for the panel and creating that diversity between the front of the panel, which gets really, really hot, and the back, which wants to be cooler. We were just talking about what regulations the, the house needs to be built to, and um, so we know that the New Zealand Transport Authority regulations are a must, but also what we're trying to do is to build our intention is to build the tiny house to building regulations, whether we have to or not, because it's good practice exactly. to do so. So when we're building, we follow um, our own good knowledge, the rules of the land, any extra council regulations in your jurisdiction, we follow manufacturer's recommendations, and we follow the advice of the building research association or brands, if you like. And then you'll find that if you follow all of those, it's very hard to get anything wrong or have any comebacks or have anything fail because all of the people that know what they're talking about have asked for it to be in a certain way. So the flashings come in components. We've, we've just had a look at the flashing that we've just installed, which is the uh, roofing paper support or roofing membrane support flashing. They're also supplying us a ridge cap, which we'll show you later, which is, fits over the very top of the roof. And you'll see it's got what we call a soft edge, which we will fold out and bend into the corrugations. That's it here. Right. So we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate that a little bit later on. But we go through and we fold the whole thing out and then bend this down into the corrugation so it looks like the roof. Right. Bundled up here, we've got the gutter. So yep. we'll, we'll demonstrate the fitting of the gutter a little bit later on. And over here, we've got the iron itself. Right, so the roofing iron actually comes in relatively small sheets, doesn't it? Well, it depends on the size of the roof or what your needs are. Um, and so they can make it to virtually any length that their machine or trucking is able to bring it. So there are certain lengths that just get too long sure. or you need a special permit to carry. But basically a really good idea is to measure your sheets and order them the length you want. Because even with a small amount of sheets like this, at, um, 20 or 30, it's a really sore hand. Using the nibblers is noisy and a lot of work. A lot of the um, punchings that I showed you, falling on the ground or wherever to take care of. Yep. Um, if you do that up on the roof, they can, on a hot day, um, you know, they can sort of stick. You stand on them, they scratch, they stick in the bottom of your boots. So really good idea to measure your iron and get it cut. Saves you a lot of work. We're measuring the length of the flashing that I was just showing Bryce about. So now we're going to cut it, bring it up, install it. Then we're going to put the building paper on and then we can start the iron. We're going to start the iron from here. So Bryce, we're just going to cut the flashing to length. So we've <coughs> measured the roof yep. and um, I've got a pair of tin snips. You need to choose a pair of tin snips the right size, basically. We're just cutting, then I'll turn around. And I'll cut that bit back through there. Now, sometimes if the <coughs> if it gets too difficult to cut, we might use a, a power tool. So there's, there's a number of different ways to do things. It's a little bit like you can use a handsaw or a circular saw to cut a piece of wood. Um, so nibblers are great.
that's all the tricky stuff, yeah. Or, or, or for cutting a sheet of iron up and down. Back Does this right. go underneath the skylight flashing? Yep. Until it can sit above the purlin. Yep. Like that. Good. I've had a look at the plan. And I want this part to come out into the gutter about that much. So on this particular job, we do have the cavity batten and then the weatherboard. So there's our first roughly 40 millimetres. And then we've got a, a packer and to sit our fascia just a little bit off the weatherboards as well. So in total, uh, we've actually got 97. So you're measuring right from the steel frame and we want this to come out roughly 97 mil in our case. So we want that flashing to sit like that. 97 mil out from the wall. So I'm just going to use a small flat headed nail, it needs to be stainless steel or galvanized. It doesn't need very many nails because this fold makes the flashing kind of stiff. So I'm only going to put about three nails in. I'm not worried about penetrating the flashing at all. Yeah. Remember that the iron is going to come right over here. Yeah, and out, sure. And the paper is over there too. Yep. So just to make it easy, we're going to put the lap line exactly on the top of the purlin. And then I'm just going to use the staple gun. Okay. They've got a mark lap line of 170 on the thermocraft so that gives us a bit to play with and is perfect. Um, these are just clips to that hold the flashing kit in place um, but I wanted the paper to run underneath them so I've, I, I took them off and now I'll put them back on. So all of our roofing material, including all of the flashings, were supplied by Diamond Roofing. They're all 0.55mm marine grade colour steel roof. The colour that we chose was Titania, for the reasons that we mentioned before in the video. We chose the highest grade of colour steel roofing that we could because we simply don't know where the house is going to end up. It could end up right by a beach. In that case, it's in a corrosive marine environment and you need to make sure that all of the fixings, all of the flashings, all of the roofing materials and everything that you put in your tiny house is of a high enough quality to be in a whole range of different environments. So to fix our roofing iron, the screws are almost always supplied by the company that supplies the roofing material. And here we are. So, a little bit like the screws that I've described previously. This is a screw designed for metal. So we can see that it's got its own cutting tip. And this is called a hex head, which is excellent for driving with our battery drill, just the same. And just in case we make any scratches, Titania. A little touch-up kit. Fantastic that they've given us that as well. Thank you, Bryce. So what we'll do is we'll just get this one in the right place. Yep. And then we will just only put a couple of screws in it. Because we want to make sure we're heading parallel to that end. That we stay correct across the bottom here. Yep. That we fit the V-Lux. And yes, that we're not too high. Too high up there get you to pop down the other end Bryce and we'll measure from here to the end and from there to the end and make sure we're running parallel along the road. Okay. It's always good to take a bit of time to set this first sheet up because it'll dictate the rest of the entire roof and you can make little adjustments as you go but if this thing's throwing us out just a little bit the roof's going to start to want to go off the tiny house instead of along it. I'm going to put a couple of screws in this to hold it where it needs to, you know, to lock it in place. And then we're going to put all the sheets on one after the other. And I'm only going to put two, three, maybe four screws max 
in each sheet until we've got all the way to the end and I know it's right and then I'm going to screw it off. It's important to get these screws tight enough but not too tight. You'll see on these screws they have a washer that's creating the waterproofing where it goes through a little uh, I think it's a neoprene washer so too tight and we start to squash that too much screw it up um, but of course we need to hold the iron down so that there's no play in it so the idea is that once I've punctured the material and I've slowed the drill speed down a little and I'm screw pulling it up nicely put a pressure on the sheet make sure the sheet is held down not flapping but held down and then gently take the screw that last couple of turns up so that there's no play in it. It's important to when you're roofing to make sure the screws go in the top of the ridge not in the valley and that's simply because when the rain hits the roof if it hits this part it, it runs down and the rain is actually as you might have seen on a corrugated iron roof it runs down the valleys and so the water's really keeping away from the screw and the washer isn't having to work very hard. If we fixed it in here, of course during the rain, the water would be washing, washing, washing and getting in. So I want to go up it very nice. Um, I'm cutting this sheet that's too wide because it's the last one. So I'm just uh, nibbling the edge off. Tin is sharp at the best of the time. Often cut edges are even sharper. It's always just need to be careful with tin. None of the roofing material or anything in this case is actually going to be wasted because all of our offcuts will be actually used in other projects. Things like beehives, chicken coops that will all be coming into the house later on. So the whole way along this build we've been really careful to make sure that we're not exceeding the maximum dimensions for a light simple trailer. And one of those dimensions is of course the height. This is one thing that's really tricky because there are a lot of things that actually go into making up the height of your trailer. As you can see, it's not just the framing, there are multiple different levels. On top of those frames, we've got the purlins, then the roofing, then the ridge cap. So all of these things are actually adding on to create additional height to our trailer. And it's a good idea the whole way across the build just to keep monitoring your height and make sure that you're within those legal limits. When the weatherboard and everything goes on, we'll have a barge made big enough right, to, to come back over, over to corrugations. Cool. And then we will be happy with the weatherproofing. Great. I could use a piece of string or flick a chalk line or use a straight edge and I'm just marking where my screws are gonna go. I'm gonna screw the roof off. Mate, you've done a fantastic job. The roof is looking amazing. Thank That's you nice. so much. Hey, it's, it's Thanks, brilliant. Chris. Well, having some help makes it easy. Yep. So, yeah, next thing we've got to do is just a little bit of trimmings, a couple of short sheets around the bottom of the Velux. Right. Um, and then really we've just got to repeat the same thing on the other side. Then we can put the ridge cap on. So now it's okay to go ahead and get your solar panel people here. Anything fixed to this side of the roof is is, can go now. Yep. And um, in actual fact, we won't worry about trimming off the roof until we've done the weatherboard. So once we've got the roof to this stage on the other side, we'll shift down now and start the weatherboards and joinery. Yep. Because it's after the weatherboards and joinery that we put the fascia on, which is the horizontal board that holds the gutter. Right. Up here, the fascia. And then when it actually travels as a trim up this way, it's called the barge board. So we've got the fascia board, the barge board, 
and then we can put the barge roll. So put the weatherboards on and then a trimming board runs up and then a metal flashing called a barge roll comes up and onto the roof and that waterproofs the whole corner going up. And then of course once we have the fascia going across the top there, then we'll be able to fit the gutter as well. So get the roof to that stage, let's put some weatherboards and joinery on. Let's do it mate, I'm looking then we'll forward be closed to it. In. Yeah. It is so exciting for the roof to have gone on. And when you're actually inside the house now, you can really get an indication for how the space is going to feel once it's completely enclosed in. And it is really lovely. Really excited to see it go to the next level. Just remember, if you have any questions about the materials, if you would like to get in touch with our suppliers, or if you would like to find our roofing cut list, you can find all of that available on our website at livingbiginatinyhouse.com. See you next time.